Amen. Good morning, Philadelphia. It is time to give God some praise. Amen. How many of you know that hallelujah is the highest praise? Come on, I need somebody, anybody to shout hallelujah. Come on, let's try that again. I need somebody to just shout hallelujah. Praise his name. Amen. God is so good to us. He is worthy of all the praise. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Come on. Clap, 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 clap. Yes, that's right. Get your body and your mind right ready to praise the Lord. Come on, sing it with me. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. And his glory above the nation. The Lord The highest praise, acknowledging Him away, and all the people say, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah! Halle, Halle, Hallelujah! Oh, Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. Yes, He's worthy, and His glory above the nations. And His glory above the nations. Acknowledging him away, and all the people say, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah! Halle, Halle, Hallelujah!
somebody give him a real good shout. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done and continue to do. Happy Sabbath, Philadelphia. And amen. God is good. God is good. Come on, somebody, just right where you are, give him a hand clap. He is good. He is good. We thank Sister Kim for giving us the opportunity to have church. Wherever we may be, we can have church. I don't know about you, but I had church a few times this week. Hallelujah. I had church in my car. Hallelujah. I had church at my desk at work, but we can have church right here this morning. Come, buddy, come on, somebody, press the name of the Lord. Give him a hand praise this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Sister Kim. Hallelujah. Our call to worship this morning comes from 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. And it reads, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to, pulling, to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. Casting down imaginations and bringing into captivity every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen and amen. Won't you just say a quick prayer with me as we, as we enter into worship this morning? Hallelujah. Here we are, Lord. We believe in your power to change us. Your creating power to make relationships new. Your redeeming power, saving us from all despair, heart, hurt, harm, and danger. Your sustaining power, giving us courage and strength, Jesus. In this hour, as we sing, as we pray, as we praise and listen together, we open ourselves to your power, to your kingdom, Jesus, changing our hearts, our lives, and hallelujah, our world. We thank you for this and many other blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, it's singing time in the sanctuary this morning. Our opening selection is hymn number 334. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. I don't know about you, but I'm tuned up. I'm in tune with the spirit this morning. Hallelujah. And we're just going to sing to the glory of God. We want to invite you to sing. The words will be up on the screen. We want you to sing from the depths of your soul. Sing unto your God the God who keeps you, the God who holds you, and the God who sustains you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy, never ceasing calling for songs of loudest praise teach me ever to adore thee may i still thy goodness prove while the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wondering to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood mm, oh 
to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be let thy goodness like a fetter bind me closer still to thee prone to Hallelujah. Praise God. We love you, Lord. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind me closer still to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. But here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. We praise your name, Lord, and we pray in your presence this morning. Seal us to your courts above. Bring us into your presence. Cause us to know that you are with us cause us to sense your never abandoning presence. Lord, we pray that you pour your spirit out on us this morning and keep us constrained. Oh Lord, we seek to be closer to you. We continually ask you to draw us closer to you. And you hear our prayers, and we thank you for answering our prayers. We're asking you to bless your word today. We're asking you to keep us mindful that you are love, the epitome of love. We want you to remind us that you have loved us before the foundation of the earth. We praise your name this morning. We're asking you to bless every head that is bowed, every person that will hear or see this message. Bind them closer to you, O oh Lord. Make them be addicts to your service. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. The song says, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice just to worship you. All my soul rejoice. Hallelujah. Won't you sing with us, say, I love you, Lord, and I leave my voice to worship you, all my soul rejoice, take joy, my King. time this morning. Say it again. Say, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice. Let 
Well, let, let that sweet spirit just sink in. We thank God for his spirit prevailing, permeating this place. You know, we started out earlier singing, there is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. Ooh. And there is a stillness in the atmosphere. Do you sense it where you are? My beloved, wherever you are this morning and you invoke the presence of Almighty God, that is the sanctuary. God is here. He is here to bless us and to do us good. And so we invite you. We invite you. We welcome you. We are thankful that you are here. We are grateful for all our great members of Philadelphia Church of Universal Brotherhood. We are grateful for our visitors, those, whether you're looking uh, on Facebook or you're, you've joined us on Zoom, wherever you are, there is a sweet anointing in the atmosphere. We are thankful to God for that. And may you enjoy the blessings that he has in store for each and every one of us this morning. So welcome. And I, I just like to make two announcements before we have our welcome song this morning. Uh, Sister Kim Lavelle welcomes us every Sabbath from the heart and we'd like you to remain for that. But I just want to uh, invite you to join us on Wednesday evenings 
at seven o'clock as we um, engage in our prayer meeting service, all are welcome. And then on Friday evenings at seven o'clock, we welcome in the Sabbath. Join us. It is an informal service. It has a living room setting, but it gives you a great start for the Sabbath day. All right. And uh, today at the close of this divine service, uh, we are asking all the men in Philadelphia Church of Universal Brotherhood to remain afterwards for uh, some instruction from the leadership. So God be praised. And now here is a great welcome song to each and every one of us. God bless. Amen. Welcome. We just want to take this time in the service to extend the warm hand of fellowship and welcome all our visiting friends. Amen. The song says, Lord, we welcome you in this place. Visitors, you are so welcome in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Philadelphia welcomes you. At this time is our privilege to invite the entire congregation for affirmation. You know, this, you know we all need an opportunity in our lives every day, that time where we can breathe in, breathe out, and affirm the love of God that's good to us. And this time we invite the entire congregation to share with us this moment in time where we affirm, make an affirmation for the love and kindness of God is great towards us. Say this, let's say it together, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, Almighty God, thy will be done this day. Amen. For today is a day of pleasant surprises, prosperity, and fulfillment. I will continually give thanks for this wonderful day. And indeed, blessing shall follow blessing. Health shall follow health. Prosperity shall follow prosperity. Fellow miracles shall follow miracles. That's right. And wonders 
Vidal, that was the I believe, I believe, I do believe. Amen. Hallelujah, church. The song says, Hallelujah, you're worthy. Hallelujah, he gets the highest praise. Do we have anybody here this morning that is glad? Come on, sing with us. Come on, say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah.
exalt you, we exalt you, so glad. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, we are glad. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you at this hour to give you thanks and to give you praise. And Heavenly Father, we can come to you and ask for thanks and praise every day and every hour. And Heavenly Father, I am coming to you on behalf of Philadelphia Church and the pastors and elders and all of the officers and members and our friend and our father. My prayer this morning is for restore of the restoration. Father, it can be of our, each and every one of us because Heavenly Father, you said we can come to you anytime. And I know Heavenly Father, some of us will say, what's wrong some of us will not say but heavenly father at this very hour i am asking you to touch each and every one of us online healing us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet lord and we ask it for spiritual healing physical healing mental healing finance healing father we come to say thank you and heavenly father we bring our sanctuary to you because from last year 2015 our building was our clothes but heavenly father we can come to you because you were so grateful that we didn't miss not even one service father because even today we are coming to you we can hear you we can reach out to others but heavenly father we come into you asking you for the respiration of our building father we asking you to uh, open the doors and asking you for finance also lord to put our building back like it was oh god back like that or even better so we come asking you heavenly father because you said all we have to do is to ask and if we have the faith and in faith that we believe it all we have to do is thank you in the precious name of jesus so heavenly father as we bring our sanctuary back to you this morning lord we are thanking you for it lord jesus we, we are thanking you father for renewing our building back to us father because you say in our jeremiah 30 17 lord if we ask you you will heal and father we asking you for complete restoration of our sanctuary father philadelphia church of universal brotherhood father we thank you in jesus precious name amen and amen thank you father for answer prayer oh hallelujah yes lord Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Medas. Uh, as we come at this time in our service, where we return to God, His tithe and our offering. I like to, I was thinking about the wonderful hymn we opened up with today Come Thou Fount of Many Blessings. And God is definitely a fountain of blessings in my life. And I know He's a fountain of blessings in your life also. And I was thinking during this time where fear is being pushed in the media every day upon the masses of people, the Lord said in his word that he will keep us in perfect peace as long as our minds and our hearts are stayed upon him. And here at the ministry of Philadelphia Church, we work hard 
even during this time, to make sure that we are ministering to each and every one of our members and our visitors and everyone that visits us in YouTube, our, our, however, or Facebook, or how, however you tune into our ministry until we can come together again uh, in, in our building. And I'm urging you to please support the ministry because when you sow into the ministry, you are sowing into the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel that sends out peace and good news into the world. And good news is what the world needs right now. Now, there are three ways that you can give to the ministry. You can give to the ministry at PO Box 642 Rockville Center, New York, 11570. That's through regular mail. And you can also give through cash, the cash app with the hashtag PCUB. And also you can give through Zelle at www.pcub Sabbath Cathedral at gmail.com. However you give to the ministry, we want to thank you for your support of the ministry. And we want to thank you for the support of the gospel of Jesus Christ going forward in this time. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you. We want to give you praise. We want to give you glory at this time because no matter what the devil throws to try and stop the word of God going forward, we know that the word of God will go through to, throughout the world, every corner of the world. Use us as vessels, however you can use us, O oh God, to spread the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ and his saving power throughout the world. Bless all those that has, that has given to the ministry and that has sowed in the ministry. And we pray, oh God, that you would bless them and multiply them even now. You know our individual needs. I, I thank you even now for supplying the need that each and every individual has right now. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much and have a blessed Sabbath.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord, I love you more than anything. Today, our scripture today will be taken from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16. I will be reading verses 13 through 19 and then verses 22. So that's 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, verses 13 through 19, and then verses 22. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints, that ye submit yourself unto such, and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaeus, for that which was lacking on your part they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, I acknowledge ye them that are such. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord with the church that is in their house. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be an anifma maranatha. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his holy word to your heart. Thank you. God bless us. Sir. Amen and amen. Thank you, Elder Gail, for that reading of the Lord's word. We're gathered here together to do what we love to do. Praise the Lord, to worship the Lord, to thank him for his goodness and his grace which he purchased for us and gave it to us as a gift. Grace is a gift from the love of God. Amen. Shall we pray? Eternal Father and our God, we take time to, to love you. We take time to approach your throne. Lord, we take time to say thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for bringing us together in your courts another Sabbath day. And as we're praying, Lord, we pray not selfishly. We take this time to lift up Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. May the Lord receive his soul in glory. May his spirit rest in peace. Eternal Father, strong to save, hear us when we cry to thee, as you promised in your word. And now I ask you to bless your word today. I ask you to make it plain. Give us understanding. But then we are asking that you help us to implement your word in our lives and help us to realize your word in our lives daily because we rely on you and we are 100% dependent on you. You are love, O oh Lord, and we are addicted to your love. Amen and amen.
The name of this sermon today is Addicted to Love. Addicted to love is what we are. We're all sold out for Christ, and we're addicted to his love. In 1986, Robert Palmer, a well-tailored British rock singer who created one of the first iconic music videos with the lookalike models addicted to love. You're, he wrote these words, your lights are on, but you're not home. Your mind is not your own. Your heart sweats, your body shakes. Another kiss is all it takes. You can't sleep, you can't eat. There's no doubt you're in deep. Your throat is tight. You can't breathe. Another kiss is all you need. Whoa, you like to think you're immune to the stuff. Oh, yeah. It's closer to the truth to say you can't get enough. You know you're going to have to face it. You're addicted to love. Ah. He goes on to say, you see the signs but you can't read, you're running at a different speed. Your heart beats in, a, in double time. Another kiss and you'll be mine. One track mine, you can't be saved. Oblivion is all you crave. There's some left for you, you don't mind if you do. Whoa, you like to think you're immune to the stuff, oh yeah. It's closer to the truth to say you can't get enough. You're gonna have to face it. You're addicted to love. <laughs> I come to speak to you today on addiction. As I began to prepare this message, I went to the concordance of the Bible to look up a text, all the texts that they had in the Bible on addiction. I found one text. I said, I found one text. Not two. One text. First Corinthians 16, 15. And it says this, I beseech you, brethren, you know how the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruit of Achia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They were like addicts to the ministry of the saints. They were hooked on ministering to the saints. They couldn't help themselves. They were addicted. They couldn't help themselves from ministering to the community. They gave themselves to the people like addicts. They ministered to the new converts like addicts, always helping, always giving, always serving. They were afflicted. They depended on performing the particular activity of ministering. <laughs> Some folks have an addiction to a substance or a thing, but the Bible says that frequently when we hear of the talk of addiction, it's generally in a negative connotation. And you'll have to agree, when we talk about addiction, nine times out of 10, it's in a negative connotation. We hear of addiction to drugs. We hear of addiction to alcohol. We hear of addiction to pornography. We hear of addiction to sex. We hear of addiction to overeating and a host of other undesirable addictions. I looked up the definition of addiction and there were many only one text, 
in the whole Bible. But there were many definitions of addiction. One definition states it's the fact or the condition of being addicted to a particular substance or a particular thing or activity. I underlined activity. He committed the theft to finance his drug addiction was the illustration they gave in the dictionary. They gave synonyms, synonyms, words that are similar to the definition of addiction. And on that list was dependency, dependence, craving, habit, weakness. On that list was compulsion. On that list was fixation, enslavement, if you will. Monkey as of, as of having a monkey on your back. <laughs> or Jones, having a Jones, a craving that you can't feel. You know I got a Jones for that woman. That looks like the high, the high we is, is, is a Jones. It's a craving that you have to, that you have to feed. There are a lot of things we could talk about addiction because there are all kinds of addiction that stain us. Addiction in the negative sense is an addiction caused by the stain of sin. I said the stain of sin brought about negative addictions. But the good news is that we can overcome our addictions, the negative ones. If we make up our minds that we're going to overcome and we seek the help, sometimes clinical help, sometimes therapeutic help, sometimes help in the form of consultation that will benefit you and help you over your addiction. And when it benefits you, it automatically benefits your family. A lot of us think, especially a lot of people in the sand, in the sun tone zone, we feel that it's a stigma to go for help or to go for counseling on mental health or, or anything having to do with uh, mental health, anything having to do with depression or anxiety. We stay away from that as if it's a stigma. There's no shame in it. All of us, especially all of us that have medical coverage should seek counseling and and if you need the help to overcome depression or 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 anxiety or whatever it is get the treatment there's no stigma attached i'm looking for a good therapist myself i want i, I think i need to talk to somebody I, uh, besides my wife anyway but um uh, addiction can be overtaken. But today, our focus is not going to be on the negative side of addiction. I thought it was very peculiar that the Bible only had one text in the whole Bible, New Testament and old, one text about addiction. I encourage us to know and understand any adverse negative addiction can be treated successfully. Yes, I do. But I want to talk about what the Bible says about addiction today. And that is found in the first Kings chapter 16. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Scratch that. First Corinthians chapter 16 in the King James Version. Uh, it, it, and we're talking about specifically 
verse number fifteen. Verse fifteen. In the interest of time, I'm cutting right to the chase. I I want to lay some background on this particular verse. It's ver as I said, it's First Corinthians sixteen verse 15 and it's especially focusing on the b part of that text the second half of the text first corinthians verse 16 king james version it's important we're in the king james version and we're going to look at verse 6 15. it says there i beseech you brethren ye know the house of stephanus that it is the first fruit of Achia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. That you submit yourselves, verse 16, unto such and to everyone that helpeth us and laboreth. I'm glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achaicus, for that which was lacking on your part, they supply. Now, this is Paul breaking it down to those that are in Corinth. And he's saying that Stephanophilus, Stephanus, Fortunatus and Achikos, for they all came and they lent a hand and it was the Lord supplying what they needed. Paul said, where you were lacking, the Lord sent these three men to help you out because they are addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. When you're addicted to the ministry of the saints you're all in for christ when you're addicted to the ministry of the saints you do things like help your community you serve your community you want to be of service in your community you want to give and give help because you're addicted to the ministry of the saints Say that with me. I don't know, I can't hear you, but say it with me. I'm addicted to ministry of the saints. Again, I am addicted to the ministry of the saints. One more time. I am addicted to ministry of the saints. That's what we are in Philadelphia. We're, we are addicted to the ministry of the saints. We want to help the saints out. We want to do for God what God put us here to do. I heard the first lady of the church in her report uh, on Passover say that we are looking to double the output of the boxes of love to our community this year in a, as opposed to last year and last year we were able to minister more uh, than ever and we were successful in feeding families and helping them to have a good thanksgiving god be praised but we are addicted we can't help ourselves we want to help now there are three things that i want you to take away three takeaways from this message and I, I'm, I'm trying to keep it simple. But number one, and I'd like to have these up on the screen if, if we can. Number one, be addicted to love because God is love. I'm addicted to love because God is love. Number two, be addicted to the ministry of the saints. I want to serve. I want to help others. I'm addicted to the ministry of the saints. And three, humble yourselves before God. Amen. Humble yourself 
before God, serving God's kingdom, giving with a joyful heart. Number three, humble yourselves before God. See yourself in your mind's eye. See yourself serving the kingdom of God, God's kingdom. Give him, give with a joyful heart. Serve with a joyful heart. It's important. It's in keeping with our teaching. It's in keeping with our teaching. Now concerning, now now I want to give you a little background. This is Paul. He's, he's uh, talking to the saints of Corinth. And he's saying in verse, in verse number one, in chapter 16, he's talking about, about concerning the collection for the saints. He says, as I have given orders to the church of Galatia, in, in Galatians, he gave the, the church there the same orders. And he's saying, even the way they're doing, I want you to do it here. Upon the first day of the week, when I read this, I thought about Elder King. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has pro prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. In other words, he's telling them, take a little bit of your profits that God bless you with on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and put it aside for the Lord that when he comes or when he sends the, the messenger to pick up the offering that we're going to give to the poor, to the needy, to the widow, to, that we're going to help and we're going to serve, there, that you don't have to go gathering it or looking for the money that you're going to give because as the Lord blessed you, you laid aside for the needy, for those that don't have, for the poor, for the widow, for the children without food, you have laid it aside. So he's, he instructs them, instructs them on that. And I, I thought that that was big. I thought that that was good. That's the same kind of strategy that we were doing last year before the pandemic. Elder King had asked everybody, take a couple dollars and put it to the side because when by, so that by the time we get to November, we have everybody can give a hundred and something dollars. I think our goal last year was 125, but uh, we put aside a little and a little and a little as the Lord is blessing. And what that does is it starts the flow of more money. You see, because when you give, you get. It is that con the law of compensation. What you give, what you put out comes back to you. And when you put out good and you're putting money aside for those that need, more money is going to come to you because the Lord sees that he can trust you with his, with his uh, currency and he'll bless you. Okay, going right on down, he says that he wanted, uh, and that may it be uh, verse 6, and may it be that I will abide, yea, winter with you. He was thinking about spending the winter there at occurrence uh, at a, in, in um, Corinthians. Uh, he trusts that they were going to help him to get on your, your way. He calls on, he calls on for, for the Lord. He calls on the Lord to provide for him. That's what I'm trying to say. That he, but he says, I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. So while he was there in current, he says that he was going to tarry in Ephesus and see what he can do. And verse 9 says, for a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now, when I read that, two things happened to me. He said, doors open. You know, we are always asking the Lord to open the doors that need to be opened and shut the doors that need to be shut. And while I was preparing this message, you know, I'm a fan of Matt Damon. I don't know if anybody knows the actor Matt Damon, but uh, but I like his work. And he had uh, a movie on, and I thought I'd seen all these movies, 
all his movies because I, I like most of his movies. And, but they had one on and it was called The Adjustment Viewer. It's a, not a new movie, it's an older movie, but it's a lot of action and it's good. And in this movie, there were doors that he kept opening and and he would open a door and it would be a whole new scene and it will he opens another door everywhere he went he looked for a door because when he opened the door it was a way of escape or good things happen but he he it was a good thing when doors open and when i looked at it i said well that's like philadelphia we pray that doors open for us and anytime we come to a a place where we need the lord to stand forth for us, doors have opened. Doors open for our families. Doors open for our church. Doors open for our children. I I I, I was blessed to hear hear that uh, Elder Gail has a graduate. She's coming. She's graduating, and I was very excited to hear about that. And doors are opening in the midst of a pandemic when schools are closing and people are complaining about no school, this, this. There's a graduation. I was I was very happy to hear about this graduation that is coming up. And I say we pray for, for her. Amen. A great door. So we have an adjustment viewer type thing going on here at Philadelphia. Now he goes on to say that because the Lord is blessing them and because they do good, they get a result from doing good because that's the law. Uh, it says now he's expecting Timotheus in verse 10. He says now that if, Ti if Timothy comes, see that he be made and to serve without fear, for he worketh the work of the Lord as I do. So he's laying the groundwork for Timothy. He says, see that he works without fear. See that you embrace him. See that you make him comfortable to do the work of the Lord. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him in peace. In other words, when you are functioning in peace or living in peace, you're living with, with nothing broken and nothing missing. You are in the graces of God and he supplies all your needs according to his riches in glory. Amen. So he's telling them to embrace Timothy, make him feel at home, give him everything he needs so that he can be addicted to helping the saints. I love it. I love it. And then he talks about uh, Apollos. And we know that Apollos was another person that did work for the Lord. And he said that Apollos wanted to be there and that Apollos uh, would come when he could. And we know because we have had sermons on, on this. And not only that, but we read our Bible, so we're very knowledgeable. And we find that when Paul was teaching on Apollos, some per people came and said, well, are you of the uh, ministry of Paul or are you of the ministry of Apollos? And Paul set them straight. You, you can find it in 1 Corinthians 3, 5. It says, who then is Paul? And who is of Apollos, but ministers through whom you believe. These are ministers through whom you believe. As God gave to each one, he said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters but God who gives the increase. And we know that. That's why we are addicted to God. God is love. And we look to where our source is. We look to God as our substance. You can be addicted to a substance. That's this, this is the world's definition. But we are addicted 
to a substance. He's our substance and he's our source. He's our God. In him do we trust. In him do we raise up ourselves. In him do we glory. We are addicted to love. You might as well face it. You're addicted to love. In our way. huh? In the biblical way, we are addicted to love because God is love. Don't get it twisted. It's a good thing to be addicted to ministering to God's kingdom. Amen. That goes on to say, now we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building according to the grace of God, which was, which was given to me as a wise master builder. That's you and me. We are master builders. I have laid a foundation, another builds on it. But let each take heed how he's building on it. Pay attention to what you're building on. Pay attention to what your practices of addiction are. Make sure you're helping others. Make sure that you are humble. Make sure that you are, are, are able or are wi willing and able to help others. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ our Lord. I want us to remember that. Huh. It is good for us to know that. It is good for us to, to, to live that, live in that, and to be understood that that's where we stand. To be addicted to love is to love God. God is love. To be addicted to the ministry is to serve, help others. Then three, humble yourselves before God. See yourself in your mind's eye serving God. See yourself lifting up the community. See yourself praying for the different programs that we are setting afoot to be of service in our, in our community. The, uh, soup kitchen, the pantry, the boxes of love, everything, the tutoring. We're, we're going to open up tutoring again and do some good. We praise the Lord for sending Dr. Thomas, who is doing a worthy work, and he's addicted to servicing the saints. Bible says that when you give, you get. And we are in the business of giving. Hymn writer says this, Oh, who is this that cometh from Eden's crimson plain with wounded side, with garments dyed? Oh, tell me now thy name. I saw thy soul distressed. Uh, a ransom gave I that's speak in righteousness, mighty to save. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Trust, O Lord, trust in the Lord, thy wondrous love, mighty to save. I trust thy wondrous love. I trust in God, who is mighty to save. You might as well admit it. You're addicted to love. God bless you and have a powerful Sabbath. Amen, amen. <coughs> How sweet it is to be committed to him. Hallelujah. To be committed to his ministry. To be committed to just give in his holy and matchless name. We thank God for that message this morning. The great hymn says, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. Pastor said sometimes addiction is the stain of sin. But I'm so glad that there is a fountain 
that allows me to lose all my guilty sins. Hallelujah. God be praised. At this time, we want to swing the doors of the church open. We just want to offer you a chance to remove all your guilty stains. We want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Let me offer you Jesus, Jesus Christ, into your life. Become addicted to the love of God. Turn your life around. He will open up the door and turn your life around and set you on the right track. And we will be there to help you once you make the decision just to give your life to Jesus. Maybe you never considered it until now, but you have a chance and you have an opportunity to remove your guilty stains. You have an opportunity to become addicted to love, to serve the Lord, to serve your fellow man, to turn your life around and start living the way God wants you to live and the way you want to live. He will help you. We just want you to put your name in the chat. Maybe you want to contact us. There is a lot of ways you can contact us. The best way is on the screen. Look at it on the screen. You can contact Philadelphia Church by email. You can do it by telephone. We are waiting with open arms. 
Philadelphia means I love the brethren. You can come. We are like a family church. It's a family atmosphere. We're sold out for Christ. We're addicted to serving our new converts. We are addicted to serving those that are in the kingdom of God, those that come to God. That's what we do. So utilize it and let us start a life anew. God bless you. Father and our God, we are asking you, Lord, to bless us. We're asking you, Lord, to cause us to be mindful of your words that we just heard. We're asking you to cause us to be addicted to your love, addicted to serving newcomers into the faith, addicted to serving and uplifting each other in the kingdom of God. That the God, our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. We praise your name, Lord, and we ask you to be with us as we strive to do your will. And now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all now and forever. Amen. 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 Well, we're thankful that you came and visited with us, that you worshiped with us today. We were happy to have you all, and we we're inviting you back next week. Don't come alone. Bring a friend. Tell somebody about it and spread the word that Jesus saves and that we're all in to lift up the kingdom of God. God bless you and keep your head up, and we will see you all next week. I want you to stay tuned to some virtual announcements that's going to bring you up to date. God bless you, and I'll see you next week. Good afternoon, Philadelphia family, friends, and visitors. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We are so blessed to have you worshiping with us this week. One thing we truly value at Philadelphia is community. And whether today is your first time or Philadelphia has been your church for years, truly the best way to get connected with our family and start meeting others is through our weekly prayer meetings. 
Our weekly prayer meetings take place each Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. and are led by our senior pastor, Dolores Jeffries. To join these meetings, connect by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058-POUND. We invite you to join us each and every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for our Welcoming the Sabbath services. To join these services, connect by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058-POUND. Our Sabbath School adult classes begin every Sabbath morning at 10 a.m. To connect to these classes, connect by phone at 701-802-5473, pin number 308-6058-POUND. Children's Sabbath School also takes place at 10 a.m. via Zoom. The meeting ID is on the screen below. Our young people's meeting at Vespers will begin each and every Sabbath afternoon at 4.30 p.m. through 5.30 p.m. To join our young people's meeting, connect via Zoom. The meeting ID is on the screen below. Make sure to stay connected with us throughout the week online at Facebook and Instagram at Philadelphia Church PCUB. For prayer requests and inquiries, connect via PCUB Sabbath Cathedral at gmail.com. Our recently added Mindful Mondays are posted each and every Monday on our YouTube channel at PCUB Brooklyn, New York. Start your day with words of encouragement from our ministerial leadership. And remember, our greatest glory is never falling, but in rising every time we fall. We're just so glad you're here. If you did come prepared to give, there are a number of different ways you can do so. You can send your tithe directly via mail to P.O. Box 642, Rockville Center, New York, 11570. Our tithe cash app is cash tag PCUB. Or you can also send your tithe electronically via Zelle to PCUB Sabbath Cathedral at gmail.com. We believe God has something unique to say to you, and our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than ever before. Thanks again for being with us and enjoy the rest of the Sabbath day.